Um, I'm happy to uh, have uh, Evandro Feifang here, who is like an associate professor of molecular gerontology at the University of Oslo and the Arcohus University Hospital. And his group is working on molecular mechanisms of human aging and age predisposed neurodegeneration. Um, Evandro's lab also received funding from VitaDAO to study discoveries of novel mitophagy activators for Alzheimer's disease. And I'm really glad that he's here today to talk about strategies on drug development targeting on aging and Alzheimer's. Evandro, uh, go ahead, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Max, for this uh, invitation. And also very nice to see his old friend, Andrea, uh, we are in the same panel. So uh, in today's presentation, I would like to give you an outline, including uh, a phenotype-based uh, strategies on drug development, uh, mechanism-driven strategies on drug development. Uh, and the importance of using AI as a fast, efficient, and useful way to screen drug candidates for uh, Alzheimer's disease and uh, uh, anti-aging. And uh, there's also a key thing in the drug development field, that is false uh, positive or false negative results. So we could reduce false positive drug candidates by using a cross-species approach. So uh, today I will cover those four uh, parts. Hopefully, I can give you uh, some hints. Um, what we are interested in aging, it is because, at least for my case, I was inspired by popular Picasso, uh, who is a very world-renowned artist. And you can see this is a portrait of himself at the age of 15, and another one at the age of 25. He actually uh, was uh, lived very long, died at the age of 91. One year before his death, he had his last portrait. And you can see uh, the increase of wrinkles, loss, uh, loose of hair and hearing, as well as an unhappy face. So this is the important thing of aging. It happens to everybody. It is unavoidable. And my uh, question to the audience always I would like to raise up, it is how do you foresee your health in your 90s? Would you be pessimistic as Picasso experienced or you would be more optimistic in this uh, technology uh, enriched society? A few uh, weeks ago with uh, uh, Lynn Cox, uh, Wilhelm Bohr, uh, Eric Vadim and Tom Kickwood among the uh, others, we would like, we had a meeting and wanted to reevaluate the current suggested nine hallmarks of aging. And we have proposed some new hallmarks of aging, including compromise autophage, uh, microbiome disturbance, altered mechanical properties, and uh, uh, impaired like DNA and uh, RNA regulation, inflammation, as well as some unknown parameters. As we are interested in aging, and it's impossible to work on all those parameters all together in one lab. So when I started to work on aging, we want to work on a parameter which could be linked to many hallmarks of aging. And it just seems NAD plus is one of them. Started from 2017 and 2019, two of our review papers, we have highlighted the importance of NAD in its linkage to many of those hallmarks. So um, the concept behind is uh, NAD and autophage or NAD mitophage axis in healthy longevity and in Europe protection. With this in mind, uh, with our uh, colleagues, we have proposed that compromise autophage is a uh, independent hallmark for aging, uh, while there's some overlap with that of proteostasis impairment. My lab uh, works on three major topics. The first one is the NAD molecule, uh, why it reduced during aging, and how to efficiently uh, supplement this. For example, using uh, NR or NMM, uh, which uh, Andrea mentioned just now. And my second topic is Ozam disease, and we are interested in new molecular mechanisms, focusing on impaired garbage clearance. We are also actively using artificial intelligence as an approach to prepare drug development, targeting on Alzheimer and uh, uh, healthy uh, and aging. 
So what is NAD plus and why it is important? It is a molecule available in every of our cells. Uh, a normal people like us, we are uh, estimated to die in like 20 seconds if there's no NAD production. Um, NAD has been coined as a molecule involved in energy production, redox homeostasis, uh, cellular pathways. And in the past uh, decades, it has been shown an age-dependent reduction of NAD+. And uh, that drives attention of the aging field. So uh, we have been working on NAD+, uh, when I was a postdoc with Wilhelm Bohr in the aging center in uh, Baltimore 10 years ago. And a series of our studies show that NAD reduction is a cause of a group of disorders called premature aging. Uh, because when we supplement NAD+, through uh, different approaches, we are able to alleviate uh, those uh, short lifespan as well as other aging parameters in those premature aging disorders. Uh, we have been very uh, fortunate to be involved in five clinical trials using NAD for Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, ALS, and uh, this premature aging, ataxia, tenagic taser. We already they finished the phase uh, one and two clinical trial with the paper uh, in preparation with my former head of department, Professor Hilda Nielsen. And I'm now leading a clinical trial with Tobin Omlan, see whether NAD plus uh, is able to alleviate uh, chemotherapy-induced cardiovascular uh, side effects. So the topic two in my group is Alzheimer's disease. The reason to work on this disorder because it affects so many people, um, estimated to be 50 million in 2080, which will be increased to 82 million by 2030. And it will bring formidable uh, socioeconomical pressure as well as other pressure. And the challenge for Alzheimer's disease research is although with more than 100 years of research, still no cure. Um, when we want to understand more of Alzheimer's disease, we should check its key pathological features. The upper part is a normal brain, a human died of uh, accident. And the lower one, which is a sex and age matched a standard AD brain. So you can see a uh, shrinkage of the cortices and uh, enlargement of the ventricle vacuolus, as well as reduction of uh, key uh, regions involved, uh, key regions involved in memory and learning, like hippocampus and uh, entorhinal cortex. If you zoom in, this is a cartoon, but there are neurons uh, inside. Uh, however, in Alzheimer's disease, those two disease pathological features, including extracellular A beta plaques and intracellular tau tangles, uh, they are disease uh, defining pathological features, and we consider them as garbage of the brain. So, uh, there have been the latest drug uh, being approved by USFDA, which was uh, an, um, uh, this memetine uh, 20 years ago. And in the past 20 years, there were more than 250 drug candidates in clinical trials. Almost all failed, except this uh, Eduham, which was approved by USFDA last year, but it is controversial. And very early, a few weeks ago, there was a drug for as an A-beta antibody, uh, showed 26 percentage um, improvement uh, pending the like, data publication. So uh, still there's no drug to stop the disease. And we wondered uh, whether we can use our, our knowledge in aging to uh, further our understanding of etiology of Alzheimer's disease and to prepare the drug development. And we focus uh, on aging because it is the primary driver of Alzheimer's disease. And we propose that uh, for uh, healthy young people, we have a lot of healthy mitochondria. They are the engine of our body. And they uh, enable the garbage clearance truck to eliminate the brain garbage. 
However, when we are getting older, all these genetic uh, mutations, uh, this uh, engine won out or does not work, which uh, eliminate the garbage clearing capacity of the trunk, which we use uh, as a way of mitophage. So our aim is to fix the uh, garbage engine. Uh, in scientific term, that is to uh, turn up mitophage. So why uh, focus on mitochondria? And there are uh, physiological and anatomical reasons. For example, our human brain, uh, although it only constitutes two percentage of the body weight, but it consumes up to 30 percentage of the energy. Uh, it, it needs a lot of mitochondria in high quality to produce ATP for our brain and uh, brain to work. Uh, what is mitophage? I can show you via this uh, uh, video provided by my colleague No Sun. So the grain as a mitochondrial network labeled by a mitochondrial tagged mitochema, uh, which is a mitophage reporter. And those red dots are mitophage. So why is that important? For example, if we're giving a mitochondrial toxicant like FCCP treatment, and we saw dramatic uh, increase of red dots indicating damaged mitochondria are eliminated. This is a very important cell survival and a protective approach. And we argue this approach is uh, dampened or at least uh, uh, impaired when we grow older and especially uh, stopped in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, based on our recent publication uh, in Nature Neuroscience, uh, we had our five years work showing uh, this likely the mitophage impairment could be a risk factor if not a cause of Alzheimer's disease. Because we have our evidence, like for example, using the APPPS1 mouse model. Uh, this is a white type, so this is a, a hippocampus region, which is important for memory. And uh, those green dots are the brain garbage, extracellular, A beta flakes. So those are disease defining pathological features of Alzheimer's disease. And you can see this, our mitophed inducer, urinacin A treatment, it dramatically reduced A beta plaques. Uh, A beta plaque was also reduced with another mitophed inducer, actinone. Uh, with this data and other data I didn't show you here, uh, it just supports the importance of impaired mitophage as a risk factor of Alzheimer's disease. Thus, we propose that uh, Alzheimer's disease, in addition to tau and A beta, accumulated damaged mitochondria can exacerbate this uh, process. And we used our evidence to show um, when pharmacologically or genetically reinstall impaired mitophage, which reduces mitochondria, can um, stop or at least uh, uh, slow down the disease progression. Uh, and there are many uh, molecules in addition to the two I mentioned. NAD precursors are also important mitophage inducers as reported in 2014. Uh, it is important mitophage inducer. So right now I'm shifting to uh, project number three, using artificial intelligence uh, based drug development to uh, increase brain garbage clearance. And the concept is using AI to uh, find drug candidates targeting um, any of the uh, disease, uh, like drug able targets, and as an approach to reduce the brain garbage. Uh, this why uh, targeting and um, why using AI? Because it has been very popular and efficiently uh, used in different fields, including medical fields, like uh, drug screening, physical and mental health maintenance and longevity promotion, among others. So two talented uh, students, including former postdoc Chen Longxie and uh, current DPhil students, Alice Rishai, with our collaborators, uh, we uh, had a study showing uh, by, so I'm now giving a schematic representation of the, of the, the flow of this project, including provi provision of uh, 18 to 19 no mitophage inducers we excluded those mitochondrial toxicant because they have low translational potential. And then uh, we built an 
algorithm, a machine learning based approach. And with this algorithm, we are able to identify AI based drug uh, mitotic inducers in uh, a traditional Chinese medicine uh, library, which contains 3,274 molecules isolated from traditional Chinese medicine, which has been evidenced with anti dementia potential. Among uh, those, we choose top 18 based a uh, cutoff score of 0.75. And those uh, 18 compounds, uh, eight of them were able to induce mitophage in HeLa cell based mitophage reporter system at a cutoff for uh, a dose of 10 micromolar. And when we then asked where those mitophage induced can induce neuronal mitophage and it can improve memory. And indeed, two of them were able to induce neuronal mitophage and improve memory in both A beta and a tau C elegans. And dry, uh, driven by those uh, port results, we further tested the two compounds in an AD mouse model through XTG, which harbor in both A beta and tau pathologies. And we were very lucky this those uh, two molecules were able to induce mitophage and to uh, mitigate a beta and tau pathologies as well as uh, uh, maintain memory. And this molecule R, uh, which we submitted uh, for uh, patent uh, pending approval. So here, just to give you a hint on what we did. So we uh, provided top 18, uh, we provide 18 known mitophage inducers while they are not uh, toxicants as a dose uh, we are uh, being tested. And then uh, we used a uh, uh, series of machine learning approaches, including uh, vector representations of molecular structures, pharmacopore fingerprinting, and conformal uh, fingerprinting, uh, and built this algorithm. And then uh, with this algorithm, we're able to identify top uh, eight compounds in this traditional Chinese uh, medicine library from the University of uh, Macau. So uh, once again, this is a summary, 18 molecules which are AR top scored, uh, seven plus one because two are the similar structure was able to induce mitophage in cells. Two of them were able to induce neuronal mitophage and increase uh, memory. And those two were also able to mitigate uh, memory loss and AD pathologies. Uh, I want to show you one more piece of data, how to test memory in the mice. Uh, so the concept is uh, uh, for this, classical Morris water maze, which is a method to test spatial memory and learning. Uh, when a mouse is in the water, it feels stressful. So it needs to explore, try to escape. And it takes a few minutes to find the platform if it's the first time. If this mouse is able to remember, then after the six to eight time training, it just takes much short time to find the target. So the short time, uh, to find the target and uh, the smart, uh, the higher, the better, the higher score in memory and uh, learning. And you can see this is a um, 3XTG AD mouse model uh, without any drug treatment. Even after six time of treatment, it was unable to locate uh, where the platform is. Oh, just missed it. And you can see the same litmate um, with um, our compound treatment for a two consecutive months. And this one it was likely to remember it is in this region rather than like this one to explore everywhere. And you can see this one has already found the target while this one is still exploring. And uh, we definitely had uh, the quantification and showing it was indeed the case. Uh, I want to highlight another thing because I have already shared with you uh, that is. Uh, a phenotypical based drug development a mechanism that is mitophage based drug development, as well as the use of AI as an approach to prepare drug development. As I mentioned, uh, in the drug development field, uh, there's a high chance of, of false 
supportive drug candidates. So how to avoid this? And we would suggest to use a cross species approach uh, because uh, once your company can show the benefit in different model systems and also in human, uh, for example, if neuroscience, iPSC derived neurons or organoids, then you have a higher uh, chance to exclude some uh, false positive drug candidates, if, if not all. Uh, right now, I want to give you a summary of today's talk. So uh, first, uh, we showed you a phenotype based strategies on drug development. And a second, which is mechanism driven strategies on drug development. And a third, which is uh, uh, invention. Uh, AI is a fast, efficient and useful way to screen drug candidates. And uh, we uh, believe a cross species approach combining with both laboratory animals and human cells, human organoids may reduce false positive drug candidates before we really take the efforts to move to uh, the medical. Uh, I just want to highlight the importance of aging research is not only at the molecular or cellular level. Um, we need to work in with the geriatricians who are taking care of patients at individual level and also the, scholars or scientists or even politicians who are making like uh, policies or even involved in economy regulations to communicate and work together to address uh, this issue. Uh, and this Norwegian Center on Healthy um, Aging Network, we were very fortunate to have uh, uh, like pioneers uh, in the field as our national and international members. Uh, I want to uh, highlight this coming Monday, 24th to 25th, we are going to organize the Nordic uh, Shanghai um, meeting one and a half days on the molecular mechanism of aging. So feel free to uh, register and attend if you are interested. I hope you still remember uh, my question, how do you foresee your health in your 90s? Uh, we definitely, uh, our aim is to be physically strong when we are 90s and uh, mentally sharp. Um, as NAD plus is one of the major topics in my group, many people, you know, uh, you, you may not know, actually it is available in both milk and beer. You may thought to have a glass of milk in the morning and uh, a glass of beer in the evening to, as a, a simple way to anti-aging. However, life is not that easy. Because NAD is very low, so you need to have a, a big chunk of uh, beer to uh, get a sufficient amount. Uh, finally, I would like to uh, thank my team members, uh, including the two former colleagues. Uh, Dr. Chen Wenxie was the first author of this uh, AI uh, paper, and Dr. Yaya Arman, who contributed a lot and now an editor in Nature Aging and our collaborators as well as funding, including Veda Tao and uh, Molecules uh, and my conflict of interest. So thank you, uh, Max, for this invitation. Perfect. Thank you, Michael, for giving the invitation. And I guess to sum it up, uh, lift weights, play chess and drink big glasses of beer. And uh, I hope you will have like some beer in that cup as well. Um, we've got some questions from the audience. Uh, maybe let's start with one from YouTube. And the question is, are there specific cell types that show more defective mitophagy in AD patients? Yes. Uh, I think people have been checking uh, the response of mitophagy during aging as well as after drug treatment. So indeed, there is a tissue specific. Some tissues and cells are more easy to induce mitophagy. For example, uh, we have an unpublished data with a molecule from passion fruit. We show those uh, molecules can induce mitophage only in neurons at the dose we use without detectable mitophage in macular or astrocytes. Cool. And then you have a question from Helena. Uh, what impact with an individual moving out of custom culture language zone migration, and what after periods of great deprivation, social insecurity, war, are there like any observational studies so far? Uh, yes, I think, um, so 
the chance as well as the severity of get uh, autism disease or cognitive impairment uh, is not just through one parameter because we are social animals. So there are a lot of things to be involved, not only the genetic factors. For example, the genetic factor um, APPPS1 a, uh, mutation only constitutes less than one to five percentage. The others, many are unknown. In addition to APOE4, people have been shown diet, uh, pollution, uh, like any historical or exposure, what uh, all those things, as you mentioned, may affect the, uh, the severity of autism disease. Yeah, I guess that's the thing that's like so multifactorial and that you have like, yeah, so many variables, even like without crazy environmental changes. Um, but one, one funny story I think is that like um, growing up in Germany, I used to know a guy who after World War II got like persecuted and like sent back to Germany, right? And he told me they, they on a carriage, they were transported and, they, and he lived like for like a bread a, a bread a day, right? But he lived until 95 or so. So uh, maybe this uh, early early childhood experience of like uh, fasting or forced fasting uh, induced something in him that uh, made him grow old and strong and uh, gave him still a long life. Um, you mentioned you found 18 molecules in around 3000 molecules to AI. Do you have like an upper bound or an estimation of how many autophagy inducing molecules are out there? Yes. So for example, um, among the 3,200 compounds uh, we have been screened using AI, uh, we gave a cutoff score of 0.75 uh, and 18 of them were selected. And then we tested uh, in cell culture. So eight of them were able to induce mitophage at a reasonable dose like 10 micromolar without induced uh, detectable toxicity. So we believe this is actually a very high uh, rate of success. If you consider some classical uh, machine learning method, uh, the success rate is far more lower than us because for our case, it's around 30 percentage. And in many classical ones, only 1% or 5 percentage. Yeah, I guess like AI and machine learning still ha well, has a big use case of like finding novel molecules. And as much as cool as like all this generative machine learning is of like coming up with like on developing novel molecules, I think if you just search the entire space of molecules that already exist, you probably get like hundreds or thousands of hits for uh, whatever we're looking for. Um, maybe one more question uh, from Mats. Um, what's the relationship between NAD plus and cancer growth? Yes, so I think this is always important uh, topic people needed to uh, pay attention to. Uh, while, while there are uh, like different uh, different like effects, whether NAD or NAD precursors can induce or inhibit uh, what type of cancer. For me, uh, as a big researcher, uh, I'll talk to the GP or clinicians. For people with cancer, or with a history of cancer, we do not recommend them to take uh, NAD+, at least at the moment. Uh, I want to give a, a quick summary regarding the contradictory of the things. So while some colleagues, I think one in Pennsylvania showing like NAD increases uh, uh, like uh, cancer growth in a naked, uh, I think in a naked mouse. However, there are evidence to show NAD precursors can also inhibit cancer. For example, in Australia, it is very common to get skin cancer because long-term sun exposure. Uh, a few years ago, a phase three clinical trial published uh, in New England Journal of Medicine with over 500 participants showing taking vitamin B3, which is uh, like uh, nicotinamide, which is a side product of NAD+, but also a precursor of uh, a side product of uh, NAD+, but also as material for NAD+, through the salvage pathway. So it shows uh, that vitamin B3 taken people can have far more lower chance to get uh, skin cancer as well to reduce the migration of skin cancer. So because we are humans, so I give high weight to the results from the clinical study rather than a mouse re results, but also we need to keep a caution uh, on this. Great, thank you for your insights, Evandro.